It's called uh, The Unified Theory of the Strange Phenomena Involving Twinning and the Williamsburg Bridge. People cross the bridge in pairs, specifically the Williamsburg Bridge. Other bridges too, probably, but I've only observed this phenomena thus far on the Williamsburg Bridge. Perhaps in the future, I will have the opportunity to observe the other bridges and determine whether this is particular to the Williamsburg Bridge or universal to all bridges. I will say, for reasons I will explain later, that I don't believe this is necessarily true for the Brooklyn Bridge. But, anyways, people cross the Williamsburg Bridge in pairs. Now, I am not merely saying that two people often cross the Williamsburg Bridge together. That would be unremarkable. I am positing that a sort of twinning is necessary for a person to either walk or bike across the Williamsburg Bridge. That for every person who crosses the bridge, their equal and opposite exists on that bridge at the same time. For every white swan, there is a dark swan. For every Laura Palmer, there is her cousin Madeline. Meanwhile, uh, meaning that the bridge, at, at, at any given moment, is a chiasmus-based ecosystem of pedestrians and bike riders, um, but motorists are always, always drive alone. They don't count things, so. um, to begin with. Let us consider the structure of the bridge. It has two entrances uh, for each type of traffic. So each divided into two lanes, one going in either direction, um, and then two train tracks. And it touches down on two different islands. Um, and has two sets of suspenders, which are the kind of hanging, the big, the, tall, the tallest part of the bridge. Um, and the bridge itself is a model of doubling. So I began to notice this when I started commute using the bridge. Um, I would walk to and from. I would walk to work in the morning and I would walk home in the evening. Um, and the reason why I started doing this is because I was living really close to the entrance of the bridge. I walk, I used to live like two, two blocks away. And then I learned that I was going to be moving, that I would need to move within a month. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna take advantage of being a couple blocks away and really just um, seize the day with this whole bridge thing. Um, now I'm gonna turn to the script. <laughs> um, and then I'd become uh, so I'd become a person who belonged to two apartments simultaneously. I was supposed to move in one month's time, but soon, due to unforeseen circumstances, the time was doubled. So I had two months to walk across the bridge twice a day. Uh, since I was walking across the bridge so often and so regularly, but in such a confined period of time, I decided to document my crossings. Every morning and every afternoon, I would take a photo or video using my iPhone. Some days I would take photos of the water, some of the structure of the bridge itself, sometimes the cloud or the atmosphere. Um, and some days I would concentrate on the other people on the bridge. Um, I was going to have a sort of a some um, multimedia presentation, but it didn't work out. So this is the part of the essay where I describe a picture. Um, so um, it is this picture <laughs> that piqued my interest. <laughs> um, there, I, the, the bridge, as I'm sure you all know, has these pink railings along the side of it. Um, and there were two guys, exact same height, um, both the same haircut, um, and they're both wearing red striped shirts and dark jeans. Look identical to each other. And so I like was walking behind them and so I took a photo and put it on Instagram immediately. And um, what really struck out to me was mostly the aesthetic version. Like what like it was kind of aesthetically pleasing. Um, and so but upon overtaking these two two people on the fast walker, I noticed I was walking behind two other people. Um, and I also had a picture of them. Um, they both had backpacks, they both had broad sho shoulders, they were both swinging their arms, their side, and both wearing cotton t-shirts. However, not only was one male and the other female, but one was dressed much more flamboyantly buoyant than the other, with a pink cotton t-shirt and stickers on her backpack. When I got closer to them and overtook them, I noticed that they both had copious amounts of gel in their hair. Um, now certainly, two sparrows do not make a spring, and no one understand, no understands that more than I. Uh, but upon passing these two people, I realized I came upon another pairing of people that we would also have a photo of if things worked better. Um, they both were wearing 
color shirts of primary colors with vertical stripes. Uh, both of advanced age, both seem to be Italian in heritage. Uh, both really tan, wearing jeans, but one was in significantly worse health than the other using a cane. Um, so now, I will turn this into personal. Um, this is, I, you're, you're in this, okay? <laughs> so prepare. <laughs> Um, as I mentioned, I myself have crossed the bridge numerous times, but only three of those times have I crossed with another person. Um, one is in her um, mid twenties. We are approximately uh, we attended the same school at roughly the same time. We're both female poets of approximately the same age and almost identical career backgrounds. We're both children of immigrants. Uh, we both have curly hair. Hers, however, is dark brown, while mine is red. <laughs> Who needs a picture? You have a model. I know, exactly. <laughs> Living <laughs> proof right here. Um, and so in this sort of twinning, um, if we were sort of to make a, a, a judgment, like a dark one, white one, I, I, I would, I'm going to dark twin. Yes. Um, um, the other person I've crossed the bridge with is a male and he's in the 30s. I've crossed the bridge with him twice. He once described me as a female version of himself. And while there are endless similarities, including our sense of humor, our poor eyesight, our inclination towards fine breads and cheeses, our inability to find well-paying jobs, our love and communicating in all caps, we have many differences. He's not, he's very handy, whereas I have no practical life skills. I'm generally optimistic, he's not. I take any opportunity to fraternize with my fellows. He sits at home, he's a blogger, and a car owner. He is the dark twin. Um, so now you may be thinking to yourself, um, I don't want to assume your thoughts, but you might, that uh, you only crossed over the bridge three times with other people, and countless other times by yourself, how can you uh, say that people go to bridge and, uh, always go to the bridge in pairs? This is where things get interesting. It is one thing to cross the bridge with a friend, relative, or significant other, only to come to the realization that you and your familiar wear similar clothes or similar body types, like similar music, Choosing to spend 30 minutes crossing the bridge with someone you were similar to is not even worth discussing. If you and your friend were standing next to each other and a stranger would think you probably look pretty darn similar, um, like, like, like. Um, it's all superficial and important. What has propelled my theory forward um, are the chance encounters that happen on the bridge. Uh, the man o leaning over the rail on the on-ramp on the Brooklyn side blasting Blondie in a stereo is matched by the man reclining against the pillar of the Manhattan side entrance, singing Here Comes the Sun. A man riding his bicycle with a dachshund poking his head of the man's backpack, cutest thing I've ever seen, um, is unwittingly twin with the woman with the bird on her shoulder on the other side of the bridge. Why does this happen? I believe that it takes a specific type of person to walk over the Williamsburg Bridge. I've walked over many bridges in my time, especially in New York. It takes time to cross the bridge. It takes physical assertion. Not every human is capable or interested. Um, most people who exist in this world are not able to cross the Williamsburg Bridge largely because um, they don't live anywhere here. Um, there are approximately 7 billion people that exist on Earth right now. About 7 million live in the New York metropolis, metropolitan area. Metropolis. Uh, but the people who live in, say, Sheepshead Bay, Jersey City, or Staten Island, probably aren't going to cross the Williamsburg Bridge, and if they do, it's kind of a one-off. Um, there are 90,000 people who live in the Lower East Side, approximately, uh, and there are 170,000 living in the Williamsburg Greenpoint area. So altogether, 260,000 people out of 7 billion. Uh, that alone is enough to set you aside. I know it's a lot of numbers. Uh, I'm already boring myself. Uh, so, but you're defined where you, by where you 